with Summit Funding. So we're here today to talk to you about mortgages and have some margaritas. So enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. Feel free to tap in with any questions. This is our first episode of Mortgages and Margaritas, so bear with us while we yes. work out all the bugs. Um, we're going to be kind of going over just a few topics. We're going to start with credit, and then in different episodes, we're going to have different topics. So you guys will have to tune in. And so for March, it's National Credit Education Month, so we'll just dive in. If you guys have any questions, credit is the one of the biggest portions um, of consideration when getting a loan. So it is a very important part of my job, which is education on either building credit, creating credit, or maintaining the credit score you have during the mortgage process. Um, do you have any questions for yourself as a I have lots of questions. Okay. Um, my first question, though, is to our viewers. Can you hear us okay? Kira, I know you're in the chat. Can you give us like a little thumbs up if you can hear us okay? I don't see them. Let's see. I just want to make sure you guys can at least hear us before um, moving on. I'm gonna tr I can't reply to, to the questions right now, but I can see when you are chatting. Okay. Oh, there's my husband. He said thumbs up. He can hear us. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I can barely read the comments. I can. So I have them up here. Great, she said. Okay. Awesome. Okay. okay. So uh, I'll get our viewers. Hello. <laughs> this is a little nerve wracking. So it's the first time for everything. So we'll get through it though. So um, do you want to talk about minimum FICOs for different products? Yeah. So. Yes. Most of my buyers are FHA, first time home buyers. So what do they need to come in with? In general, it's a 580 credit score is the minimum that FHA will go. Some different parameters will allow us to go lower, but there has to be extenuating circumstances such as really good income or, you know, it's it, other things. But 580 is in general the minimum FICO for an FHA loan. Um, and FHA is geared towards the lower credit score borrower. So it is a great product. You're going to pay a little. If you had, for example, a 600 credit score and you it was between a, a, or a 650, let's say, an FHA versus a conventional, FHA in general will give you a better rate because they are geared towards a lower credit score. Okay, so that's, that's pretty good. I always thought that it needed to be, you know, like 650s, closer to 70 now, the, to qualify. The conventional is probably the most popular. It's just the old school, everybody conventional, and that's a minimum of a 620 FICO. Anything over 620, um, you're going to go into VAs, it has a 640 minimum, and a 620, this is USDA, but really 640, they prefer for USDA. So the more, the more you know. Um, I would say, on average, I, we fund a lot of FHA borrowers. We have a rescore tool, which is nice. So if somebody wanted to come in and get pre-approved and we find out their credit, then we can kind of guide them on what they need to do to build their credit to get into qualifying or what they need to do to maintain the score. So there's a lot of misinformation out there saying that you, know, you need a 740 credit score to get a mortgage. It's not the case. Well, that's good news for me. Um, <laughs> and what about other conventional loans? And I know that that affects your interest rate too. Your credit score affects your interest rate, which I had no idea that those things. Yeah, credit score is one of the biggest things that will affect your interest rate or qualifications for the loan. So during the loan progress, say you come in and you're we're pre-qualified, we don't want you to go out and get a new car. We don't want you to go open new credit cards. We don't want you to close credit cards. Um, or closed lines of credit. Well, that's something that a lot of my clients are like, oh, I, I want to pay off a, a bunch of debt before I try to get approved for something. And so tell me about that. The paying off is different than closing. So paying off is fine. That's actually one of the ways to build credit. Uh, we want to see you at a, the credit bureaus like to see you at a 30% usage rate on all revolving debt, revolving such as credit cards, line of credit. Um, so try not to use, if you're trying to build or maintain a high credit score, try not to use more than 30% of your available credit at any given time and make your payments regularly on time. Um, 
don't close cards. So if you say you have a card that's 10 years old that you haven't used, but that's your longest standing credit line, you're not going to want to close that card because that's essentially your reporting for 10 years. Once you close, it doesn't report anymore. So you've lost that 10 years of history. Okay. Well, what about, um, I know VA is something that we're personally going to be looking into. Is there any minimum credit scores for for that or? The VA is a 640 um, okay. limit. They That's definitely right. do cater their debt ratio. allows you to go a lot higher than a conventional or FHA. VA is a great product. Um, again, the it's always nice to know where you stand. So the, that's the beauty of getting pre-approved is that's part of the pre-approval is we're going to tell you where your credit is. And when you decide you want to buy a home, then we start going into how to rebuild, establish credit, or maintain credit. So the, um, a way to build credit, say you don't have any credit at all, is a credit card okay. or a secured credit card at, at a, your local banking institution. We, I started with like a $200, I think I had to put down $200 deposit to even get the card. And then I started making payments and, and like you said before, only using a, a certain percentage of that. It was $200, so every month I only spent $20 of that and I saw my score skyrocket, which was awesome yeah. for me because I'd worked on it for so long. I got advice when I was a lot younger to use cash for everything and that was probably the worst advice I ever got. Yes, yes, <laughs> and then um, another hack is if say you have somebody, a, a family member in general that has a really long outstanding credit score on a, car, a credit card, they can out, offer, if they're willing, they can add you as an authorized user. And that's going to have you piggyback okay. on their credit. So say they had a Costco Citibank credit card. Um, and Costco is one of the ones, or Citibank, is one of the ones that will report authorized users. So if your mom has a great credit score and has had her city card open for 10 years and you are an authorized user on that card, you all of a sudden have a 10-year history. And I've seen credit scores go from 500s to 700s in the matter of two months with that. And that doesn't mean that you actually need access to that card. Correct. It's okay, just so an authorized user. you're not even user. using it, it's just kind of getting back You're, back you're back authorized back. on it, but then your mom or whoever that authorizes you doesn't have to give you a card. You don't have to use it. And then it's a, it's a great hack to get a quick credit score or build your credit really quickly or improve your credit really quickly. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Any other little hacks for, for building credit or establishing credit when maybe you haven't used a credit card or haven't had anything? What kind of time frame should someone expect to have when they're just starting to build that? Yeah, you know, if you were to come in with no credit, I would, I always say six months. That's kind of how, okay. from the, when opening a card, because what's going to happen is you're, when you open a new card, there's nothing really to go off of, so it takes six months of steady payments and um, usage. So the usage is another thing, when I say 30%, some people get a card and don't use it at all, and that's not really helping you or hurting you, it's just not doing much to you. The credit bureaus want to see that you're able to maintain debt mm -hmm. and show responsibility with using your debt and maintaining a payment history. So that's where the payments come in. If you pay it off every month on the due date, that's great, but if you don't use it, then you don't really use it. So we always suggest, I when I somebody gets, if you were to come into me and go and get a credit card, I would say put your gas, fill up your tank of gas a few times and then pay it off at the due date and then okay. just do that and in six months you will have a significantly improved credit score in general than you would have otherwise. So that's credit hacking instead of actually using that full line of credit that they're giving you. Yeah. They're like, oh, here's $2,000 and you go to Costco and go crazy. That's actually gonna end up hindering you. Exactly. So if you have a $2,000 credit card and you go max it out, that's actually gonna hurt your credit versus help your credit. So, so they want to show you want to they want to see responsible responsible usage of credit and that you're able to maintain a um, a limit that's not always maxed out. If you max out a credit, it's going to end up hurting your credit score. So how often do they report? I know there's three major companies. The, it all depends on the credit card company and when they report. Um, mo I, th I think most of them report between the 15th and 28th of the month from my experience, but it, it really is up to the credit card. And that's a question to a ask your credit card company. Is when they report? Yeah. So and then you can kind of see when they report and then make. So I, I've heard you can make like partial payment before yes. two weeks before your due date and then 
two or three days before your due date. So it kind of looks like you're making double, double payments. payments. And okay. that, is a, that is a trick, um, it, 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 you know, which is nice. If you can do that, absolutely do that. Another thing today, if you are in a pinch and you've really maxed out a credit card, a $1,000 credit card, and you know they're reported on the 28th, as long as you pay off that credit card before the 28th, it's not going to look like you used the full credit card limit because that's when the credit card reports, the credit card company reports to the credit bureaus, Experian, TransUnion, um, and the um, other one that I'm drawing a blank <laughs> I think we all know them, we just can't pronounce them. Yes. So. <laughs> Equifax. And there Not we right. go. And it start with an E. Yes. Well, that's great information. Um, so, and then the different types of credit is open end, which is similar to credit cards are open end, lines of credit. Home equity lines, which we do a lot of those report as an open-end credit. And then there's closed-end credits, which are your mortgage, car loans, um, student loans report as a closed-end credit. So those are a little different where you don't have to worry about maxing them out because those are up front. You get a $15,000 car loan and then you maintain a payment throughout time or make two payments a month. They don't have a credit limit to where you can add back on. So yeah, you're, not, are, you're not adding to that you're credit not, or debt that you owe. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so that's a closed ended. Closed end credit versus open end, which is your credit cards. And is what open ended the credit card? That's what the credit bureau goes off of to to nope. make your score. No, nope, they go off of both. So that's a it's a, a credit mix is always great to have, which is closed end. So car loans um, and credit cards. You could have one or the other, but in general, the more time you're out in the world and get established credit, the more chance you are of having a mix of closed-end and open-end credit. Okay. So, so that just leads me to a, a little bit of an off-topic question, but still relevant, I feel like. Um, so your debt-to-income ratio, when you say you have good credit, but you're using your credit cards and you're having an auto loan, and so how does that affect someone when they're trying to get like an FHA or a conventional yeah. loan? So, each credit um, card company or has a minimum payment due. So if you have a balance, it's gonna, when we pull credit, unless the credit card has been paid off, if it's been paid off, it will nine times out of 10 come out as a zero, a zero balance and a zero payment due, which is great if your debt ratio is on the, the edge. So what I would tell people to do, if they know they're gonna be really tight and this is where a rescore would come in, they could pay off their credit cards and have a zero balance and a zero dollar payment um, report and then that's going to not affect their credit their debt ratio but if you have a three hundred a three thousand dollar credit outstanding credit limit on your credit card and it comes back with a three hundred eighty dollar a month payment that will affect your debt ratio so, so what what was the debt ratio that is ideal um well lower is always better um especially now with the fannie mae the new fannie mae um llpa pricing matrix but we'll get into that on the an next another episode the next episode <laughs> but um 45 we like to see 43 is that uh, conventional that's the max so anything under 40 we in general we see them anywhere between 35 and 45 get um loan approval pretty easily so a, but, a 35 or 40 percent debt, debt ratio, ratio. Yeah. we'd like to see under a back-end debt ratio of under 43 percent for qualifications but we can go up some some it depends on the loan program and we'll get into that in another episode go up to 50 percent or more va goes up i've seen them as uh, closer to 60 percent debt ratio depending on credit scores okay. but that is all so if you were to come in and you know you have for example you've had a long outstanding credit history but you have balances on all these little cards it's best to pay them off and then wait 30 days to make sure all the credit card companies have reported to credit at a zero balance and then you don't have to count that payment towards your debt ratio okay but a car loan for example as long as it's, if that you have a car loan that payment's always going to report the same the closed end doesn't change the payment doesn't change and so that goes the same with like student loans they don't yeah so student loans is another one that we see a lot of um especially the more and more in their, the deferral. So a lot of people have a misconception that, oh, well, my student loan's in deferral, so I don't have to count a payment. That's unfortunately not true. I wish it was, but we do in, have to count 1% of the outstanding balance as a payment. So if your student loan is in deferral and you don't actually have a payment due, us as lenders have to acquire, uh, uh, do a 1% outstanding balance as your monthly payment for your debt ratio. Does or a half a percent, no depending what? on, yeah. Okay. Half a percent is Freddie Mac's minimum as well. So okay. I think I didn't twist those two up. Yeah, it's easy to mix those two up. Yeah. It's confusing. It Freddie, Freddie Mac and Fannie, Fannie Mae. Mae. And then Ginny Mae. Don't forget Ginny. about Ginny. Oh, well, Ginny. <laughs> but yeah, do you guys have any questions for us?
you can kind of see the list. It's kind of hard to read, but I think I can make it out. Um, I know Matt has the questions on his phone. If anybody has any questions specific to credit, even non-credit questions, I know no. we have a few viewers on here right now. So shoot, we're willing to answer yeah. anything you guys have, or at least attempt to. Attempt to. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't know the answer, we'll get back to you. I know that. Yeah, that definitely. Yes, that would be good. We set up our uh, backdrop and everything. Shelby did an amazing job. Well, above this margarita sign, it does say mortgages, so it's not just margaritas. It just blends in really well. So gold on gold is not the best idea, but that's all we had at the moment. Yeah. So I'm glad everybody tuned in. And if you guys can do us a favor and share the live, I'm trying not to you know, get on our devices and share it to other pages, but it'd be helpful if you guys share. Yeah. And then we're going to go live on YouTube. They would not allow us to go live on YouTube tonight, so we have to wait until our access is get, granted. We have to get permission. We have to get permission. So Facebook allowed us. So here we are. Um, and, I mean, any, any questions that you guys have, we'd love to answer. Give us a few more minutes and... See yeah. if we get any questions. Otherwise, we'll just probably keep chit-chatting about our personal needs. Yeah, the authorized user is a great hack. That's one that a lot of people just know don't know. That? And that's, um, it's awesome. They used to have, conventional financing used to have, or mortgage, used to have to where you'd have to have five credit lines mm. with two years of credit history, and that is a lot. So now they've gone down to just a, a basic FICO. I feel so, like when you're having like five lines of credit that's a lot to balance and maintain especially when each one's like oh here's two thousand here's two thousand but only use a small portion of that it is. And, then if you're, yourself. And, and what we were discovering or back when lending when that was a thing people would go out and open they wouldn't have any lines or they'd only have one or two then they'd go off and open three or four more lines and the more lines you open depending on the time frame it can actually hurt your credit score mm -hmm. so it was kind of counterintuitive to tell people that they need five lines and two years of credit reporting, then they'd go out and open credit cards, the same time. and then their 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 credit score would tank. So, so now we're just at a basic FICO score versus how long. So that's nice if you didn't have any credit. It's kind of you know they would go out and add your add yourself to, as an authorized user, and you can have a 740 credit score in the matter of 30 to 60 days, depending so on who you're added to. How long do you want to wait if you? If, say someone's out there that doesn't have any credit cards and that was kind of how I started and I got my first it was a secured card and then I had to do a down payment and do use only the 20% so it was $200 on the credit which yeah. I don't pay yeah. and then you use $20 of that for you know something I would just go buy $20 for or whatever but how long should you wait until you get that first card approval until you want to get your second you know I, I'm a little out of the loop on that because it's been okay. so long since they, they did that I would we used to tell people, I think back in the day, you know, open one line every six months, but then you're getting into two and a half years. So, you know, it was just That's a long time it's to build, to build credit. Five, so, three to five lines. And I think that was kind of the deciding factor why mm -hmm. um, conventional financing, they, they just switched it to a basic FICO score because it was hindering a lot of borrowers that, you know, five, if, when I bought my first home, I didn't have five lines. Um, no, that's so what I'm like, a lot. Because we're trying to buy our a house soon and we've just been working on our credit my husband's credit's great and mine I never used yeah. I never used um, credit cards because I was always told it was like you know don't don't buy it if you can't afford it yeah you know so as I got older and I realized I was like you know what I guess I should probably start building credit yeah. and learning about investing and things like that I was like okay now now I have I think two or three cards credit cards that I've built and it has drastically changed my credit score quickly and of course, I use like Credit Karma, and, and I watch so I can see when they do report because it'll show you on the dates that yeah. they report. And then I do I do the credit half yeah. thing where I'll pay. And there's small portions because I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm glad you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. So Credit Karma is one. It is a great tool for. <laughs> it is a great tool, but it is not everything. We in general do see a lot of discrepancies. So, for example, I talked to a younger couple last week, and they were at a reporting. Uh, 750 on credit karma mm -hmm. when we pull their credit it came it usually there usually is a discrepancy and it's usually a lower so credit karma i i'm not sure mm -hmm. they 
but it's it's a great tool to know where you're at and so monitor. It's a little, a little gray area. It's a yeah. little gray area, so don't put all your eggs in one basket. Credit Karma is in general a little off based on the credit scores we see when we pull credit. And then, um, well, don't do they average? I know there's like the three major ones. Do they average those scores? Because most of the time they're different. All of those yeah, scores are different. They don't average them. So what they do is they take the the middle score of a single borrower. For example, if Experian is six fifty. Equifax is 657 and TransUnion is 640. They'll take the 650 number. So the middle mm, score okay. that you have, if you and your husband Clyde, for example, buy a house, they're going to take the lowest middle. So so my middle, so <laughs> your middle, based on your your, your self incriminated yourself there. So. Hey, I don't mind. Like I will own my truth. I did not yeah. do any credit. Well, we'll get you there. For, yeah. So I I've, I've started to build it, and it's been it's probably been a few years now, of course. But like when I was younger, I just I was told not to. Yeah. I was told not to use credit cards. So that's what I did. And then growing up and realizing on my own, I was like, no, like you, you need to build credit. You need credit to build credit. You have to borrow money in order to build your score yeah. in order to get what Back, you want. Yeah. I remember my grandparents would always sit to, oh, don't use credit. Don't do this. And it's just, it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. Kira wants to know, what are things that you shouldn't do when you want to buy? Well, there is a list of them, Kira. Um, definitely, we don't want to see you go out and get, open new credit. Close old credit after or, you've gotten your loan approval. Yes. Right. Okay. So when you're trying, yes. then that's or fine. even a pre-approval. For example, if I give somebody a pre-approval, I, I, I would, I don't. It rarely happens. Once in a while, they'll go out and open a new credit line or buy a car and finance a car, and those things can definitely affect a pre-approval during the loan process. We don't want to see any of that as well. We don't want to see anything. Think steady during a. We want to say we maintain. We don't want to see anything change. Um, so don't go out and buy a new car. Or during, furniture. Or furniture. Um, store cards. They'll get you and they'll, it, it happens more often than not where people go to Kohl's, for example, and they don't even, they sneak it in there and you open a Kohl's card and you know, they, your debt to income ratio yeah, change. And you don't even realize it's not good. Yeah, and you don't even realize it was a credit card. You know, they don't tell you it's a Kohl's card. So. Just be careful of that, and as a lender, I'm always there to answer questions if stuff like that comes up. What about um, if you're an escrow or, or you have an approval, can you co-sign for stuff? I, that was a question I got the other day, and I was like, I don't think so. No. Okay, so I don't think we so. do not like to see you co-sign because technically you are responsible for that. So if the person you're co-signing for defaults on the loan or credit card or whatever you're co-signing for, they're going to go after you. Mm -hmm. So... No, do not co-sign. No co-signing. Don't open any new credit or close credit or co-sign during the loan process. And I have a whole cheat sheet of do's and don'ts. That would be a good, good, be good. do's and don'ts during a loan, the loan process. Maybe there's more. Link it. Yes. Do we, do we have show notes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can link it. This is, we're just getting in background. Yeah. Do's and don'ts of the, during the loan process. Should we get a new background? Just list all of them, a whiteboard? Maybe. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of things to not to do. But, um... Yeah, this is great. I think this is um, good information. A lot of people I are, you know, the knowledge is power. And like I said, sorry for a little nervous the first time, but I think that we're getting there. We're getting we're there. With us guys. Yeah, and we always <laughs> our emails. We can post our emails if you guys have questions in the future. And we'll figure out. We're probably going to be on YouTube next time, and then we can I think share it before we actually go live because now we're sitting and can't really mess with the computer. But yeah, we'll share it to to other platforms. So then we have. Um, Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all those will have a link in YouTube. All the fun social media stuff that you're so great at that I'm not. So great. Yeah, so great. Well, um, I'm choking on my ice over here. <clears throat> is that our cue? <laughs> <laughs> um, unless you guys have any other questions, we'll, I think this will save and we'll turn it into a video and we'll yeah. post it to save and, and kind of upload for our episode one of Mortgages and Margaritas. Mortgages and Margaritas. <laughs> and thank you guys for joining us and being interactive. And again, if you have any questions, I think we can add them into the comments later. Or? I think so. I think it'll well, it'll post as a recorded video after we stop, and then you can yeah. continue to comment on that, or you're welcome to mess message either of us directly, and we can chat further. Definitely. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and end it, you guys. Thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you. Happy house hunting.